we are going to start a new chapter today um, which deals with uh, design of non ideal reactors. Uh, so, we are going to look at reactor models for non ideal reactors. So, let us take a review of what we have learned so far as far as non ideality in reactors is concerned. Okay. As, as you know, uh, there are ideal reactors like CSTR, uh, PFR, okay, in which the flow pattern is well defined. Okay. In, in these reactors, the flow pattern is well defined, whereas non ideal reactors, the flow pattern can take any particular shape in terms like if you look at an E curve. Okay. Now, this flow pattern tells you how the fluid is flowing inside a reactor okay, or somehow like uh, it does not follow a very particular or specific pattern. Okay. Now, in order to get a conversion, final aim is to have a reactor design okay. and this reactor design somehow we have to incorporate this non ideality So, I can assume any reactor to be a plug flow reactor or a CSTR. Okay. So, there can be uh, non ideal flow patterns which will affect the rate, uh, reactor design. So, in the last chapter we looked at 0 dimensional models or yeah 0 dimensional model for non ideal reactors. So, in this you have a typical E curve right and this E curve of course, is a as you know E, e, e is the exit H distributions that means, I have a reactor this inlet is going outlet and what you are seeing at outlet gives you this particular pattern. Now, there can be many different possibilities which of the flow patterns which would give rise to this E curve. Okay. And what happens inside a reactor is not exactly reflected in the exit H distribution okay. is something that we already learned. Okay. So, so, there are different possibilities in, in terms of what happens inside a reactor the mixing pattern inside a reactor. So, mixing is not well incorporated in the E curve. So, then we looked at two different extremes. Okay. So, one extreme is a complete segregation model and another extreme is the maximum mixedness model. Now, what, what let me quickly revise so that it forms a nice platform for further discussion as far as this chapter is concerned. So, let me quickly revise what these two models are. So, maximum mixedness model means that mixing is maximum. So, mixing between what? So, if you look at this E curve there are different segments okay there are different segments every segment okay right so these segments rather will have will be flowing through the react every segment will have a residence time and that's why like uh, you'll have a fluid element which will have a specific residence time and there's a distribution of residence times so, you have different segments spending different residence times in the reactor right? and the extent of in terms of the mass or volume of this, this particular element spending this much residence time in the reactor okay, that may vary right? and that is nothing but a E curve. Okay? So, you have this different segments or different elements spending different residence time. Now, we are talking about a mixing between these two elements. We are talking about the mixing between these elements or, or several elements. Okay. Now, there is an extreme where these elements they mix they are well mixed okay, right? and there is another extreme where these elements they do not mix at all. So, they they go in parallel, okay, they do not talk to each other, they do not interact with each other. So, that is segregation, complete segregation and there is another extreme where these are completely mixed. 
Okay. Now, how it happens and all, okay, we are not going to look at that in detail, but that is the meaning of it. Okay. Why we look at these extremes? Because these two extremes would give us a bound on conversion. Okay. So, it gives us a range. So, given an E curve, given an E curve like this, okay. I make an assumption that the complete segregation of these elements and then calculate a conversion and then another extreme where they mix, okay, thoroughly mix before they come out inside a reactor okay, and calculate a conversion and these two conversions are likely to be different and they are going to be different for most of the reactions but they are going to be same for just one case remember what is it when the reaction is first order and i think uh, it has been discussed well before why first order reaction internal mixing doesn't matter okay whereas any other order okay internal mixing matters a lot that so if you go for a complete segregation model and maximum mixedness model these two models are going to give you different convergence different uh, extent of reactions. Okay. Intrinsic current is the same, okay. rest all the volume of the reactor everything is same, E curve is same, but internal mixing will matter. Okay. So, what happens in this case? I am not going to get an exact conversion, why? Because it is a 0 dimensional model, I am just going to look at extremes. So, I get bounds. Okay. I get a range. So, I may say that fine, okay, for a given volume, this is the possible range of conversion that I am likely to get if the E curve is like this for a non ideal reactor. So, it may vary from 0.45 to 0.55. So, that is the idea I get, but I do not get an exact conversion. That is the limitation of this model, it is a 0 dimensional model. It talks about Okay, the extremes as far as the mixing inside a reactor is concerned. E curve only gives you partial information on the flow pattern, it does not tell you about the internal mixing. Okay. And for the first order reaction of course, it does not matter. So, it, instead of getting a bound, I will just get a single value. I do not have to worry about whether it is a complete segregation or whether it is maximum mixedness. Okay. So, this is a quick revision of what we have learned before and now let us go ahead. Now, this is a problem with 0 dimensional model where it gives most of the times for a non first order reaction the range of conversion okay, because we consider it two extremes we are not really looking at what, ha what is happening inside. Okay. Now, in this chapter we are going to look at uh, different models, one of them is one parameter model. One parameter model. So, I have an additional parameter that is going to give me some idea about the conversion. Okay. It will help me get the exact value of conversion for the given E curve. Okay. For the given E curve. Now, remember that this model that we are going to discuss okay, or other the two types of one parameter model we are going to discuss, they are applicable to a particular geometry. I will elaborate this point later, but remember that. Okay. In one parameter model, we have two models that we are going to discuss that is tank in series and dispersion model. Now, let us consider a tube, let us consider a tube that is why I said it is it is applicable to a particular geometry again I will tell you why okay, later we okay, will just talk more on this a tube there is a flow that is taking place hmm. and and you may have different extents of back mixing that is occurring. Now, if you have very flat profile what it means is you have a plug flow reactor. What is the E curve that I am going to get? The Dirac delta function. Okay. 
So, the so the E curve for the plug flow reactor is direct delta function, but this tubular reactor that I am talking about is not a plug flow reactor, not necessarily behaving close to a plug flow reactor. You know, okay, not a single real reactor is behaves like an ideal CSTR or PFR. It is close to those reactors in extreme situations, but they don't exactly follow the pattern that we assume. Okay. But anyway, like for if you are very close to a plug flow reactor, if you are getting a E curve which is matching with the Dirac delta function to some extent, like you can make an assumption that be behaves like a plug flow reactor and I can design the reactor accordingly, considering some possibility of um, conversion being plus minus. Okay. But that is okay that because by making the assumption of plug flow reactor, it reduces the complexity or rigor in calculation, it makes my calculations simpler, it helps me to get some quick estimates of conversion for a given volume or for given conversion the estimate for the volume. All right. So, let me get back to this. You have a tubular reactor, you have a tubular reactor in which there is a possibility of back mixing. That means, I am not going to get an E curve which is similar to a del direct delta function or a plug flow reactor. So, what is likely to happen? Say so, you have E curves so E T versus T. Now, for a plug flow reactor, I am going to get something like this infinite right you know the meaning of it and this is nothing but tau which is volume divided by volumetric flow rate this is an ideal situation okay now what i am going to see in reality is somewhat like this possible i may see something like this I may see something like this. Okay. Why does this happen? It happens because there is mixing in axial direction, mixing in axial direction. If there is no mixing, I am going to see something like this, right. But because of mixing, some fluid elements okay, may spend more time because they go back and then forth. Okay. So, it is possible that they spend more time in the reactor okay, and they come later. Some fluid elements may spend less time just to compensate for those who have gone ahead or those who are lagging behind. So, it is possible that you get a distribution. Okay, right? So, it is I am talking about a tubular reactor where there is a possibility of back mixing. Okay. You may you may have packing, okay. it may provide some uh, because of torchosity and all it is quite possible that you are you do not have the exact plug flow type behavior. Now, so these are the different E curves, how do I interpret these E curves and this has happened only because of back mixing. So, I need to incorporate the effect of back mixing in this particular behavior that I have observed. All right. So, let us consider any E curve right. Once this E curve is obtained, I have a tubular reactor, I do a pulse injection experiment and look at exit edge distribution, I am going to see this. Okay. Now, this is something given to you from this you are going to come up with a model. I am going to determine a parameter. Now, mixing is characterized by C S like you have a say let us have a, a hypothetical mixer or agitator in the reactor. Okay. So, in the in the tube itself I can say that tube is consisting of various compartments sorry if you have infinite such compartments in a given volume total volume small small compartments what does it mean infinite it means that you have a 
flow similar to a plug flow reactor. Okay. Now, you reduce the number of compartments. What does it mean? That means, there is some back mixing happening. Okay. You go on reducing, go on reducing, mixing extent of mixing would increase. Right. Consider an extreme where you have just one compartment, there has to be a compartment. Okay. So, a one compartment, what does it mean? A compartment with agitator in it, good mixing, complete back mixing in that compartment, what does it mean? It is a CSTR. So, then another extreme, okay. another extreme. So, what does it mean? So, you have on one side you have a CSTR, on the other side you have PFR, CSTR means one compartment, PFR mean, means infinite compartments, in between you have a reactor okay, which has partial back mixing, right? which has partial back mixing. So, now you would have guessed okay, what is the parameter that I am talking about? It is a number of compartments. Every compartment is a CSTR perfect back mixing. Right? So, it is the number of CSTRs or number of tanks which are in series that are going to that number is going to be a parameter for this model. Fine. So, why I am saying it is a tubular reactor, it is a tubular reactor. So, let us consider a reactor which is a very irregular geometry. Say I have a reactor like this. This is an inlet, this is an outlet. Now, there are flow patterns, then there are there is a possibility of some isolated zones, right? And and you have the output here. And what you are going to see is a behavior like this, any general E curve. Now, this particular E curve does not look like the E curve of a tubular reactor. Okay. Why? Because for a tubular reactor, let us let us look at all the possibilities. Now, you have a plug flow reactor, you have a plug flow reactor, CSTR, E curve, right? CSTR. One CSTR is this. What will happen to two CSTR? Like uh, in the case of two CSTRs, you're going to get something like this. Then three CSTRs, four CSTRs. See what is what is happening now? As you go on increasing number of CSTRs, you're approaching the plug flow. This is of course going to infinity. This is becoming narrower. You started seeing a delay here. So, what is happening as we go on increasing the value of n, that is, number of compartments, number of CSTRs in series, okay, the behavior, okay, it goes, it follows this particular train, goes from CSTR to PFR. But look at these curves, the nature of these curves these curves and compare it compare these curves with this particular curve i am getting a very irregular shape here or other very uh, unusual or other it is like there are many fluctuations ups downs and all that why why does that happen it happens because of the irregular geometry here and not defined the geometry flow pattern is quite complex okay so this flow pattern and this flow pattern they're not matching so, can I apply a tank in series model for this reactor? I cannot do that. Okay. Why? Because it, there is no curve that fits well in this particular shape. So, again the one parameter model has its own problems. Okay. It is applicable to most of the times a tubular reactor, where the E curve is like this or one of these rather. It is a continuous thing, okay. it is a continuous thing, there are no ups and downs, no recirculations or recycle type of behavior. Okay. So, I will go back to my statement that one parameter models are good for tubular reactors where you get E curve 
with a nature like this. Okay. Clear? Okay. So, let us go ahead and do some mathematical derivations. How do I find out number of tanks that I have in series for a given tubular reactor? Say I have an E curve, I have an E curve. How do I find it? Okay. So, let us derive an expression for the E curve for a tank in series. Suppose I have n number of tanks in series, n number of tanks in series. Let us try with 3 tanks in series first and then extend this concept to n tanks. So, let us have 3 tanks in series. Okay. Fine. So, let me write it, write expression for the E curve. That means, I am going to give a pulse here, I am going to give a pulse here and I am going to see what happens here. So, this is my E curve and this is what I am going to get, likely to get. Okay. Fine. Now, can I get an expression for this? Because I know how CSTR behaves. So, let us write E t into delta t, this is a fraction, you know the meaning of this, I am not going to repeat. See, E t delta t is a fraction that comes in between t and t plus delta t. Okay. That is equal to the volumetric flow rate, I am going to assume that the volumetric flow rate remains constant throughout into C 3 t, that means C 3 is a concentration that at the outlet of tank number 3. So, 1, 2 and 3, right? tank number 3, C 3 t into delta t divided by n 0. What is n 0? n 0 is the total amount of pulse that I have injected. Okay amount of pulse that I have injected. How do I calculate N0? N0 is nothing but based on C3T because now I, I want to get rid of N0. I am just looking at concentration at outlet. See try and visualize okay, like the real, realistic experiment that I am doing, a real experiment that I am doing. Okay. I am looking at the concentration at the outlet. So, try and express everything in terms of concentration at the outlet. Now, N0 is the total amount of pulse or the, the tracer rather that I have injected. Okay. N 0 is equal to 0 to infinity C 3 T D T. Total amount that has come out okay, into of course, the volumetric flow rate. So, concentration right concentration into volumetric flow rate into time. So, I just integrate right I just integrate from 0 to infinity. So, that much amount I have injected as tracer. So, that becomes n 0. So, let us go ahead fine let me substitute for n 0. So, what I get is E t is equal to V C 3 t Right. It says, sorry, this is delta t. So E t is equal to C three t divided by divided by So I have got an expression for E t based on the concentration at the outlet. Now, the C 3 I need to get that in terms of the residence time initial concentration or inlet concentration. Okay. And I know all these are CSTRs. Let me write in steady state balance for a CSTR. CSTR 1 V 1 is a volume of CSTR d c 1 by d t, you, you have learned this unsteady state balance for a CSTR is equal to minus v c 1. Right? Shall I write here? This is what? This is going out. Okay? This is going out. This is accumulation. Coming in, 
Shall I write this? No, because what I am looking at, see it is a tracer experiment, it is a pulse experiment. Okay, I am injecting a tracer and then after that at 0 time I am injecting a tracer and after that I am observing the response. So, after that is there anything that is coming in as far as the tracer is concerned? No, right. So, I have injected and stopped it. Okay. Now, it is only the inner that is flowing, the solvent that is flowing. The tracer is not coming in after 0 plus and this equation I have written is for time 0 plus onwards or let me 0 onwards. Okay. So, this term is not there, this term is not there. So, I have only this equation for the concentration in the first tank. I am writing it for the first time now, later on I will do it for second, third and then finally, I will get an expression for C 3 that is my objective. Okay. So, here from this I get a concentration at the outlet of tank 1 where I have the boundary condition at time is equal to 0 sorry time is equal to z 0 C 1 is equal to C 0. If I solve this equation it is very simple right and uh, that is nothing but C 1 is equal to C 0 e raised to minus T by tau 1. What is tau 1? Tau 1 is equal to V 1 divided by small v. This is volumetric flow rate, this is the volume of first tank. Okay. So, this is the expression for C 1 that is the concentration at the outlet of first tank, first tank. Okay. So, let us continue now. So, this acts as inlet for the second tank. So, let us write an expression for the second tank, tank number 2. Tank number 2. What is it? V 1, V 1, sorry V 2, d c 2 by d t is equal to small v c 1 coming in okay, minus small v c 2. I cannot neglect this. Okay, because I'm, this is changing with respect to time at 0 plus C 1 will have some value. So, there will be two terms as far as tank 2 is concerned. For tank 1 inlet was 0 because tracer was 0 at time 0 plus. Right? Before we go ahead let me make an assumption that V 1 is equal to V 2 is equal to V 3. Okay, all V's are equal say V just for simplicity. Right? or uh, let me say V i because I am going to use V for something else later. I am going to use V for the total volume. Let me call this as V i. So, it becomes V i here. Okay. Fine. So, let me simplify or other solve this further. For C 1 I have the expression for C 1 I have the expression what is that? This one. Okay. So, this expression I will substitute for C 1 what I get is this d c t 2 by d t is equal sorry plus c 2 by now I will say tau i why tau i. So, what is tau i? Tau i is equal to v i divided by small v which is constant that is volumetric flow rate given to you. So, c 2 divided by tau i is equal to c 0 divided by tau i into e raised to minus t by tau i. I am just substituting for C 1 okay, and expressing everything in terms of tau i now. So, you know what is tau i. Hmm. So, I get an expression for a differential equation for C 2. Right? Now, again for this I need a boundary condition at t is equal to 0, C 2 is equal to 0. Right? So, this equation I solve this using this boundary condition. Okay. So, it is a famous or is a popular method of integration factor okay. e raised to t by tau i. Okay. So, this expression can be solved using 
integration factor or integrating factor okay, e raised to tau by so t by tau i and I get a solution for it, I get a solution for it which is given by c 2 is equal to c 0 t divided by t tau i into e raised to minus t by tau i. See concentration at outlet of the second tank is expressed in terms of initial concentration time anyway I want to know how it changes with time and of course, the tau i right. I have eliminated c 1, I have eliminated c 1. What is my aim? I am my aim is to get c 3 in terms of c 0 t and tau i. So, let us do it now ok. I follow the same methodology for tank 3 substitute for c 2 because now in tank 3 the inlet is c 2 right and I solve this equation fine. So, what I get is C 3 is equal to, so you can try it out ok. Again the same methodology, I get what I get is this, oh sorry, T raised to minus T by tau i. So, you have 2 appearing here right, see the difference, not much difference, but of course, you have the you have the exponential term there, right? but then instead of t now it has become t square, I have 2 appearing here tau instead of tau y I have tau i square. Okay. Okay. So, let us go ahead. Now, I have the expression for the E curve or rather the E for the entire reactor the tanks in series. What is that? This one. Okay. Now, I have the expression for E, I have the expression for C 3, substitute the C 3 in E curve or rather the E expression for E. Okay. So, what I get is, see final, so obviously the objective is to get expression for E. So, I substitute for C 3 and so let me write this first, so that C 3 right. Now, what is this? This is the total amount of total amount of the in tracer that I have injected ok. The amount of tracer that I have injected. Can I get it in terms of initial concentration C 0? It is possible. Okay. What is it? If you look at that what happens at time 0, you have C 0 is equal to N 0 that is the total number of moles or whatever unit can be grams or moles whatever. Okay. You have that much amount of tracer divided by V 1. So, this is something present at time is equal to 0 sharp okay, in the reactor. Okay. V 1 is a volume, it can be V i also in our case. Okay. So, let, let me call this as V i, which is nothing but the total amount right, is V 0, which is nothing but V rather. into C 3 T D T right divided by V i. So, from this what is this V by V i is tau oh sorry 1 by tau. So, this tell, tells me that this integration is nothing but tau i into C 0 right. I am just expressing it in terms of initial concentration because this is appearing in the final equation right. Okay. So, let me go get back to this equation. 
this is for the E curve, this is for the E curve. I am substituting for C 3 that I have just derived okay. C 3 that I have derived here. I will substitute it here and then I will have a very simple equation E t is equal to C 0 C 0 will get cancelled and I will have T square divided by 2 tau i. Now, it is cube because there is one tau i which has come from the denominator integration term okay, e raise to minus t by tau i. Now, this is for 3 tanks. If you apply the same logic do it for 4 tanks, 5 tanks, 6 tanks, n tanks then what I am going to get is, is for n tanks okay, is t raise to see 3 times 2 here n minus 1 divided by see n minus 1 factorial into tau i raise to n see the logic then e raise to minus t by tau i. This is for n tanks in series. So, I have got expression for E curve for n tanks in series, a general expression for E curve for the n tanks in series and that is what I want right. So, when I get a E curve, I have E curve. So, in this there is only one parameter that is n that I can calculate from this. Okay. So, this will opt this will obtain from experiment in the laboratory for a reactor, a tubular reactor under the flow conditions that are desired for the reaction. But of course, I do the experiment in non, non reactive condition, you know that just to get a res residence time distribution, right. So, from this experiment I get E curve. From E curve I get n because I have the expression for tanks in series E curve and once I get n then I can calculate a conversion. Okay. Uh, what is n? n tells you the extent of back mixing. n infinity means it is PFR n 1 means it is CSTR and in between 1 and infinity you have the extent of back mixing characterized by the number n. Okay. Fine. So, let us go ahead and simplify it further because this equation looks a bit complicated. So, from this we are going to define a term called variance. Of course, you know what is variance when you have distribution the variance that means, how much at a particular time the value is away from the average. Okay. So, there is something called as a variance before that we will define a term a non dimensional term tau sorry theta equal to t by tau where tau is the total residence time what does it mean that means tau is n into tau i the individual residence time every tank n into tau i is the total residence time okay so, if tau i is equal to v i by small v, then tau is equal to capital V, which is nothing but v sorry v 1 plus v 2 and so on divided by small v. That is why I said no, I will be using v for something else, the total volume. Okay. Why? Because see. I do not have tanks, I am just assuming a tubular reactor to be set of tanks. So, all I know is the total volume, right. So, I need to express everything in terms of total volume finally, right. So, this total volume is V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 and so on. So, the residence time based on this total volume, okay, is tau, right. For individual reactors, what is tau i? 
Now, it is tau and then I have a dimensionless number theta expressed in terms of tau that is t by tau. Okay. So, I have the expression for E t, I have the expression for E t, I will write it again t raised to n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial tau i n right e raised to minus t by tau i. Now, this will get reduced to e theta. Now, t will be expressed in terms of dimensionless time theta. If I do that, then all this will get converted to n into n theta raised to n minus 1. See, t will become n theta because see t right then e raised to minus n theta divided by n minus 1 factorial. Okay. So, so this is the expression for e in terms of dimensionless time instead of the actual time. Okay. We are going to use this further. That is why you expressed it like that. Now, there is a variance that we define. Now, how do we define variance? If you have a distribution, the expression for the variance is in terms of dimensionless time variance square okay, is equal to actual variance in time divided by tau square. Okay. Now, so this is nothing but 0 to infinity theta minus 1 square e theta d theta. Right. Uh, I hope it is clear if you write just variance in time you will have t minus tau okay. you have to just divide it by tau square okay. and then you get this the variance as I said like how much you go away from tau mean residence time. Okay. So, if you expand this further what you get is 0 to infinity theta square e theta d theta minus 2 I am just expanding this. So, theta minus 2 theta plus 1. So, you get this sorry. Hmm? So, what is the value of this? This is equal to 1 this particular term. What about this? This particular term. This is dimensionless average residence time dimensionless so, it is going to be 1 because it is the reference is tau okay, for the residence time. If it, it was t e t d t then it was tau. Now, it is theta e theta d theta that means it is tau divided by tau that means 1. Okay. So, this is this is going to be again this integration is going to be 1 this is 1, this is 1. So, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. Okay. So, 0 theta minus 1. So, this is the expression. I am, I am going to simplify this further. Okay. So, let us solve this integration. Let's solve this integration. What I get is, or before that, let me just write it again. Right now, I will substitute for e theta. See, we have derived the equation for e theta. So, this is e theta. Okay, I will just substitute for it. n n theta 
n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial e raised to minus n theta d theta minus 1. Okay. Now, if you do all this, what you get is of course, you take n, so you will have n raised to n divided by n minus 1 factorial will come out right and you have 0 infinity theta raised to n plus 1 e raised to minus n theta right d theta. So, if you solve this further what you get you can do it on your own. So, it gets simplified to a very simple term 1 by n. And this is what I want, sorry, variance is 1 by n. Variance will be obtained from the E curve. So, once you get variance, right, you get a value of n, number of tanks in series. Okay. So, n is equal to 1 by sigma theta square which is nothing but tau square divided by sigma square. Right? So, I get a value of n, this is what I want. Right? So, given the E curve, now we will see how to calculate sigma from E curve, I have already told you the expression for it, but we will solve or I will tell you the procedure to get sigma okay, from that or this sigma, then from that I get n. So, E curve will give you sigma and sigma will give you the value of n. Right? How to calculate conversion for the given n? Now, we are talking about a reactor, tanks in series, it is very simple. No? I have n number of tanks, how do I calculate conversion for a CSTR and I have n number of CSTRs in series, the conversion say for a first order reaction, okay, the conversion is 1 minus 1 by 1 plus tau i k raised to m. Tau i is the again, see do not get confused between the, these two taus, this tau is the residence time for a single tank. Okay. What is k? k is a rate constant and this is something that you have done before. Okay. So, let me summarize, I have a tubular reactor, I have a tubular reactor, I want to get the conversion. Okay. The problem can be other way around, for a given conversion find out a length or sorry the volume of the tubular reactor. Okay. So, when I have a tubular reactor, so let us talk about a rea given reactor and calculating conversion. Okay. So, I have a tubular reactor, what will I do? I will not assume it as a PFR. Okay. Now, we are talking about a non-ideality, there can be possibility of back mixing. So, what I will do is I will just pass a fluid, I will do residence time distribution experiment. I will inject a tracer, look at its response at the outlet, I will get an E curve from it. Right? Once I have an E curve, then I can get a variance from the E curve. From the variance, I will get a number of tanks in series for that particular tubular reactors, reactor rather. If it is close to PFR, the value of n will be very large. Okay. If there is so much back mixing happening for some reasons, the value of n will be close to 1, 1, 2, 3, whatever. Okay. So, I get a value of n. Once I know the value of n, I have the expression for conversion. Okay. I have the expression for conversion and that tells me how much is the conversion based on n. Because rest all you know, okay. what is this rate constant? Tau i is the residence time for the individual reactor. How do I calculate tau i? Because I know the total volume for the tube. 
So, I know the total residence time from re total residence time I calculate the individual residence time or uh, residence time the individual reactor by dividing it by n, the n is known right. So, I get an expression for the conversion that is for the first order, but of course, for second order, third order I will have different ex expression it is just solving a problem for CSTR. So, I have converted a non ideal reactor to a, an ideal reactor problem ok tanks in series ideal reactors in series that n varies n is the parameter. Thank you. We will continue this discussion. We will solve a small problem of course, not numerically, but I will tell you the procedure. So, that the things will be clear to you ok fine. Thank you.